Due to Damar Hamlin's collapse, the NFL matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals was postponed. However, the major question is why Damar Hamlin's collapse marks a seismic shift in the NFL. We will also be discussing some things that need to change in the NFL to make it safer. Keep watching for more information on all of this in today's video. Starting us off, why Damar Hamlin's collapse marks a seismic shift for the NFL and its fans. Tom Brady of the New England Patriots threw a deep ball down the field in September 2008 when Kansas City Chiefs Safety Bernard Pollard slammed into Brady's knee helmet first. Brady was reduced to a writhing heap after the contact, which did not result in a penalty and was sidelined for the remainder of the season due to a ruptured ACL. What happened next, though, struck the reigning league MVP the most. He explained to Sports Illustrated that they played without him. The NFL conceals its inherent cruelty by assuring the public that it controls the situation. When a player is injured, the medical staff rushes to his aid and whisks him away into a tent or the state bowels for an x-ray or painkiller injection. The next man takes his place. The game continues. On Monday evening in Cincinnati, it may have happened again. After a perfect tackle around 9 minutes into the game, Buffalo Bills safety Damar Hamlin fell to the ground and didn't get up. As soon as Hamlin collapsed, the Bills medical staff sprinted onto the field to do CPR and pedal heart restarts. They attempted to resuscitate the 24-year-old while surrounded by a prayer circle that included nearly the entire Bills squad. Players appeared terrified, which was understandable. Hamlin had and torn a hamstring or suffered concussion-like symptoms, he went into cardiac arrest and was brought to the nearest trauma facility by ambulance. With ESPN droning on through the pregnant pause and some Cincinnati players warming up on the sidelines, there was little reason to believe that this primetime NFL game with significant playoff ramifications wouldn't go on. After an hour, however, the stadium video screen displayed the following message. The game has been postponed for the evening. The fact that everyone appeared to believe it was the proper decision, including the players, NFL refs, and the sold-out Bengals' Paycor Stadium audience made this such a groundbreaking event in sports. You should know that a weird thing happened when NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell stated that the league has decided to postpone the Bills-Bengals game with the help of the NFL Players Association. From the stadium, supporters from both teams made their way to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, where Hamlin, who was in critical condition, was receiving intensive care. After receiving two resuscitations, Hamlin's family later stated that he had lung damage to express their solidarity, they lit candles and hung Bill's flags. Hamlin is no Brady. He was a sixth-round draft pick in his second season and quickly established himself as the dominant player on the field and a stalwart of the Buffalo community. An online campaign for a toy drive he had planned before the Bengals game managed to reach 2,500 following his accident and total had risen to approximately $6 million. Football fans may now be more informed and less ignorant of the severity of the game and its long-term effects. Players are now more frequently recognized as real individuals with families and mortgages and an average of three years to make the most of their pro football careers. They are less likely to be dismissed as entertainment-only bags of flesh designed to smack into one another. They also know how poorly the game treats its players once they have completed it. Usually, professional football doesn't stop for anything, like when 28-year-old Chuck Hughes collapsed on the field in 1971 or 26-year-old Howard Glenn broke his neck during a game in 1960. The players in both situations later passed away, yet the teams continued to play. Nick Foles of Indianapolis and Tua Tagovailoa of Miami suffered horrific on-field injuries this season alone, a fractured rib and at least two concussions respectively, but none of them resulted in cries to call off their games. Eerily, Tagovailoa's health scares occurred while playing against the Bills and the Bengals. Monday night, though, was different. The players showed their strength in numbers by pleading with the coach to reschedule this critical game, ultimately pressing the NFL's hand before the organization had developed a clear rescheduling strategy. Hopefully, the days when a game could not be stopped without a player dying are behind us. Next, NFL needs a culture change to eliminate all helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits. When questioned about Bernard Pollard's fumble-causing hit on Patriots running back Stephen Ridley in the fourth quarter of a game that was later down by one touchdown after his team had won the AFC Championship, Ravens head coach John Harpo described the play as football at its finest. The NFL is having a problem. Football has an issue. Before more players have their careers and perhaps their lives destroyed, the culture of the entire sport needs to change. The hit was not a penalty according to NFL rules. As Pollard went for a tackle, Ridley dipped his head to brace for contact. The helmet-to-helmet -helmet impact was unintentional, and no flag was raised because NFL rules do not protect running backs in the same manner that they do quarterbacks and receivers. The play was crisp, but it was not 
football at its best. Ridley mishandled the ball after colliding with Pollard because the hit knocked him out cold, forcing his arm to go slack and the ball to tumble out of his grasp as he dropped to the grass. In the NFL, it is against the rules for the ground to cause a fumble, yet it is perfectly legal to knock a player out. Ray Lewis was given a 15-yard penalty earlier in the game for striking Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez, which is comparable to the hits on Pollard and Ridley. According to NFL regulations, the difference between the two plays was that Hernandez was a defenseless receiver and Ridley was a running back. Many Ravens supporters and unbiased observers criticized the flag during the first hit, claiming that Hernandez had lowered his head before making contact with the helmet. Many Patriots supporters and neutral onlookers criticized the second hit for lagging a flag, arguing that such a severe knock to the head should have resulted in a penalty. The disparity is perplexing. According to NFL spokesperson Brian McCarthy, the NFL Competition Committee had examined the subject of hits to the head of running backs. He reminded us that the committee must see the game through the lens of the entire season rather than just reacting to a few hits in the AFC Championship game. The problem is more significant than two hits in the championship game and extends far beyond the season span. Not changing the laws about vulnerable athletes is currently the most urgent matter in the NFL. The NFL must deal with much more severe problems than merely how to safeguard the running backs. The entire culture must shift. No helmet on earth can adequately protect NFL players' brains from repetitive assault and keep them safe. A significant transformation of football's culture and a new understanding of the game are required. When tackling, athletes have been instructed for years to lead with their shoulders. On the other hand, leading with a shoulder is leading with a head, just to the side. Those heads collide when an attacking player turns, sidesteps, or lowers his body to brace for a collision. The game has become too quick and fierce for players to lower their heads, lead with their shoulders, and hope for a tackle. Finally, after Damar Hamlin's cardiac arrest, sports fans pleaded with the NFL to change how players dress and emulate rugby. Following Damar Hamlin's cardiac death on the field, sports fans demanded that the NFL re-examine jersey armor. It was reported late on Tuesday that the 24-year-old Buffalo Bills athlete had improved after his ventilator usage dropped from 100% to 50%. On Monday, Hamlin fell after colliding with Cincinnati Bengals receiver T. Higgins and was sent to the hospital after receiving emergency medicinal treatment at the stadium. Doctors believe Bill's safety had 1 in 200 million damage to his heart that cut off blood flow to his brain and caused a cardiac arrest. The shocking incident has rekindled discussion over the gear used by NFL players and whether or not armor should be employed. Rugby and football both entails hard impacts and strong tackles. However, English football does not use any padding. A helmet, face mask, shoulder, and body pads are standard components of NFL protective gear. If NFL players were not protected by armor, some fans have questioned if they would change how they tackled. As one Twitter user said, he wondered what would happen if they removed all the padding and gave them leather helmets. They wear armor, which is why they attack with such ferocity. In rugby, you don't see guys flinging themselves like that. They would have to tackle it differently if they didn't have all the armor. Fans have called for the NFL to remove the armor. It was reported that the running back used his tough shoulder pads as a weapon, resulting in the hit on Hamlin, which is impossible in rugby. Another fan said that football was a fantastic but bloody sport, and he didn't see it continuing in its current form for long. Another social media user commented following Hamlin's hard arrest that it was time for the NFL to go through their equipment, including helmets and body armor. He also added that they shouldn't put it off another day and should contact those companies and scientists and get this done. Another fan stated that football might be less dangerous in organ impact injuries if there was less body armor, not more. The force of the players' impact contact has increased due to body armor. It may offer some injury protection, but not this. Hamlin's family expressed disappointment that Higgins, the Bengals player who made the tackle with Hamlin, was drawing negative attention online. According to Jordan Rooney, a family friend and spokesperson for Hamlin, DeMar's parents were angry that he was receiving bad feedback, so he reached out and backed DeMar and his family. He told ESPN on Tuesday, for training camps leading up to the 2022 season, the NFL introduced a new league-wide soft shell guardian cap to reduce head injuries. So that's it guys. So do you think DeMar Hamlin's collapse marks a seismic shift in the NFL and its fans? And should the rules and gear for the NFL be revised? Let's hear your comments in the section below. Please remember to subscribe and thank you for watching.